Hello everyone, you made a way. When our back was against the wall and it looks like it was over, you made a way. God made a way for us when it seemed like it was over. And that same God will make a way for you. Welcome to my channel. This is BBTV. Beatrice, how you all doing? Hope you're fine. Hope you're feeling well. We're all praying. Christians all over the world, we're praying. And God is hearing our prayers. God bless you. Remember the last video I made, I talked about 11 years of waiting. Uh, it was supposed to be 10 years of waiting. I'm sorry. I was just in the haste to do, you know, to talk to people and encourage people. 10 years of waiting. So today we're going to be talking about five years of waiting after wedding. Five years of waiting after wedding. And God has been faithful. And I'm going to share with us some books that I read that helped me. And one of the book is The Power of a Praying Wife by Stormy Amartian. The Power of a Praying Wife by Stormy Amartian. Sorry, I'm going to be telling us about this bond part later. You know, books are treasures. When you hold on to books, it helps a lot. I, the, this book has been with me for a very long time. <laughs> so today, I want to tell us, I, I got uh, engaged in things in churches that, in church that helped me, activities in churches that really helped me to wait. I, I, I taught in a school and I, I opened a little restaurant where I was cooking. You know, I'm good at that and my food was a bomb. You know, I before before you know, I finished selling. You know, I just put a little touch, BB touch to it, and I was selling. I got a job in Leadway Insurance where I worked for about a year, and and, and money was coming from our branch to Ross from Lagos, but uh, my our boss then were just taking the money, and most of us left the company. And so I just said, instead of doing that, let me start up a business. So I start up a cosmetic business. I travel to Lagos to always buy things. I saw my brother was into the business, introduced me to the business. And we started a business. I started a business and God made a way. I go for good goods. I go for good original goods. And before you know, I finish selling, I go again. You know, those are the things that helped me. Those are the things that helped me. I got myself engaged in so many things because I didn't want to sit down. They say an idle man is a devil's workshop. I didn't want any thoughts, evil coming to my heart. So I got myself engaged. By the time I get home, I'm tired. I eat, bait, and sleep. So that, that, that's what really helped me. So madam, if you're outside, if you are going through the same situation, please get yourself engaged. Don't just stay at home. Look for something to do. No matter what people say, I heard a lot. I heard a lot. Some could not even hide it. Some said it to my face. <laughs> are you sure you are married? You know, a lot of humiliation, a lot of insults. There is nothing I didn't receive from people. But I thank God I didn't retaliate. That's one thing God has blessed me with. No matter what you do to me, I don't retaliate. I just look at you because if you know better, you do better. That's just the truth. So a lot of people said things to me, but I didn't bother because I know where I'm going. I know if you know where I'm going, don't give up. Don't give up because of the situation going around. Don't give up because of people talking around you. No, hold on to that thing you believe and God will get you, will take you there. So today, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the, some of the challenges that I went through. While I was waiting, some of the challenges, a lot of challenges that I went through, you know. So, but I want to share with us from the book of Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 46, then verse 50. Psalm 119, 46, verse 50. 46 says, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings. You are a king, therefore I'm speaking of God's testimony before you. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed to tell you what I go through. I know some people say, ah, oh, story, story. It's not story. There are a lot of people going through a lot. There are a lot of people going through hell. There are a lot of people going through the... So this is a place of encouragement for everyone. That is why I said, share the channel. Share the, the, the group. Share the videos to people that you know it will bless their lives. Don't keep it to yourself. I'm not selfish with it. That's why I came out to encourage people because of what I went through. So it's a blessing to you. And it's a blessing to everybody that you know. So he said, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings. I will not be ashamed. When God is with you, there are a lot of things that will make you look as if you are ashamed. But don't give up. Because God's testimony comes true. When God is backing you, when God is with you, nothing can stop you. Verse 50 says, this is my comfort in my affliction. I will change that word affliction to challenges, situations, things that don't really look comfortable. You know, this is my comfort in my affliction. This is my comfort in my challenges, in my situations, in my circumstances. For thy word had quickened me. 
Thy word hath quickened me. The word of God is what keeps you when that, that wind blow. The word of God is what sustains you when nothing is working. The word of God is what keeps you going when you know that it's like I want to give up, but this is what the word of God says. He says he's with me. He says he will never leave me. God's word is our comfort when we go through challenges. God's word is our comfort when things look as if it's not, it's, 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 the day is not, it's not getting bright. The Bible said the, the, the life of a, of a righteous man, it shines brighter and brighter. Yes, it might look as if it's dark. It's not. Don't let the enemy deceive you. It's going to shine brighter and brighter in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's what I just wanted to share with us. And, and, and the reason why I read that, I want to share the challenges I went through. You know, my husband is a blessed man and I thank God for him. The hand of God is upon him. He's such a loving man and I continue to pray. And there's one thing for him. One thing I want to encourage you, auntie, uncle, please keep praying for your spouse. Your prayer is the best. One thing that helped me then, I kept praying for him because in this book, this lady brought out a lot of prayer points. What you should pray for in your spouse is very important. Please don't, 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 don't let it slip off. You know from you keep praying for him keep praying for him keep praying for him and god will see you through so today i the one of the i just want to list like few challenges that i went through while i was waiting uh, i had a challenge of it was the day my apartment got burnt it was gone everything all my clothes my shoes everything went on fire and prior to that time i bought a very big uh, mattress and you know it was i think it was an electricity outburst and all that and before that time, God spoke to my husband. He called me and said, honey, let's pray against fire outbreak. God spoke, talked to me about it. Let's pray against it. No, no, it went against us. But I thank God that your plan failed. What helped my things not to get burnt? What helped, sorry, my things all got burnt. What really helped most of the things that I treasure, that, that I know will help me in future? God kept them for me. Why? When somebody called me from, I was in the compound when the fire caught, but I was busy behind the, the building. Somebody just climbed from the other fence and said, Auntie, this house, the house, house is burning. This house is burning. I said, where? He said the other side. And where the person pointed was my flat. When I got there, it was, on, it was in flames. Fire was burning. I think it was an electricity. The, the enemy took advantage of that. It was an attack. I knew it. I knew it. But what I kept saying, God, I'm a tighter. God, I'm a tighter. God, remember your covenant with me. God, I'm a tighter. Oh, God of my fathers. I was calling the men of God that I you know, that I believe in the grace of God upon their lives. And I called my senior pastor that time and he spoke a word. Immediately they took the lights. You know, they took the, the power went off and they were able to put off the fire and everything. But everything got burnt. Everything that was brought out from that house was, <laughs> was burnt. Everything. Not even a single slippers. I couldn't bring out anything. Most of the books I got, I, I had got burnt. And that is why I say I will tell all the story. You know, this was one of the books that you were able to bring out. But every other thing got born. This was a part of the books I kept inside. Prior to that time, when my husband told me to start praying, I just started having this urge in my spirit to carry my 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 tight booklet, my my some of these books. I just carried it. I was just led, and I opened my one of my books. I placed them inside. Normally, I don't do that. I put my tight booklet on my reading table close to my Bible, so I can easily just have access to it to do to write my type whenever I want to write my type and all that. And when I did it, when this fire got when this thing got fire, my Bible was intact. My type booklet was intact. The certificate I thought was burnt. Out of this the, the scrap that they packed, I tore one of the bags, everything, my certificate, everything was intact. God is faithful. God is faithful. He said, when we pass through the water, he will help, he will be with us. When we pass through the fire, he will be with us. Indeed, God is with us so that was one of the challenges the other challenges was when i was my husband and i were trusting god and uh, in the year 2017 and brothers came to the house Perhaps before that evening i was not i was just being disturbing my spirit and i was praying and and at midnight at about three i think 3 p.m 3 a.m um, i just heard someone jumped from the fence into the compound and at that time, my brother that is a pastor said he, he, he had a vision that somebody was being beaten, beat to death and was dragged to the mortuary. And they asked him to go and 
See, if he knows the person. He said when he got there, he couldn't recognize the person. At the same time, I was having a dream before I heard a jump of somebody over the fence. I was, I was having a dream that somebody was being pulled out of, pool of blood, you know, and I started praying, Lord, Lord, and that was what woke me up. And they didn't know I was aware they were already in the compound. So what I did, I just went to the passage. I hit my hand on the door, you know, the noise just to make sure people wake up. I didn't know where the boldness came from. At that time, I was very strong. But I didn't know where the strength came from. And I started shouting, God, you said you will give your angels charge over me. God, you said you will deliver me. And could you believe it? The Ambra bass outside me say, that God that you are calling, those men of God that you are calling, that they, their grace will save you. They will save you today. Which means these people planned for me. They came for me. You know, most of these people, they don't really work like that. They are being pushed and manipulated by the powers of darkness. So you have to know what you are fighting. And I knew it. Oh God, remember me. Oh God, remember your covenant. And that was how my neighbor heard. Because she normally heard me pray at midnight. But she knew this tune was different. So she just knew what was it. I just shouted her name. And I said, God, we give his angels charge over us. She just knew that was the code. And she called the police. And, you know, before they could finish breaking the windows, breaking the louvers, breaking things, the police came and they ran away. That was how God delivered me. And... The enemy never wanted me to come and join my husband. It was a battle. But the devil is a liar. God is on the throne. He never fails. He can never disappoint us. And that's after that year, the other year, that's when I got my visa and I'm with my husband today. Praise God. He made a way. That is why I sang that song. When it seems like it's over, when it seems like our back is against the wall, God will make a way for you. God will open that door for you. Auntie, are you waiting for your husband? Continue praying. Trust him. He will make a way for you. I want him and I want to encourage us. There are things you'll be doing. Keep it to yourself. Apart from telling your pastors or your pastor to pray with you, every other person, keep it short, every other person out. Apart from your pastor, keep it to yourself and pray. There are things you tell people, not because they are evil. No. But... You saying it out, like my, my mother and my, my husband would say, the world has, has ear to hear. There are things that you are believing God for. As you are praying and your pastor is praying for you, keep it to yourself. Because let me tell you, it's not everybody that is happy for you. So you have to be wise. So I kept it to myself until I joined my husband here before people knew. And today I'm grateful to God. So that God, the God that saw me through, the God of Pastor Uche Ben and Benjamin, that saw me through, will see you through. He will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. And that's what I just came to share with us today. Hold on to God. You will tell of his goodness. You will tell of his testimony. Just where, just the same way I read from the book of Psalm 119, from verse 46 and verse 50. We will tell of his goodness. God bless you. I'll come your way again. Just know that the best is coming for you. God bless you. Bye.